Hello. So this is where we are at the moment in terms of progress. I'm pleased with, I think, a lot of them. And again, bear in mind that we're looking at shields that are going to be visible from a sort of tabletop distance. There's a couple that I'm not particularly chuffed with, so I'm going to address those. Um, I just thought I'd let you know what I didn't like about them. <clears throat> so I don't like this silly idea that I've put on here. The uh, uh, the sort of little bits of uh, transfer I had left from the little Big Man Studios batch. So I'm going to pull those off. I also don't like the blue. I think having the blue is too much. It's not a... Well, it doesn't feel like it should be a historical colour. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, <clears throat> these, this, this looks silly. This looks a little bit naive. So again, I didn't really have a good idea for these. So I'm going to overpaint this and think about that one again. Um, <clears throat> this is all right, um, but it's certainly not my finest work. Um, so I'm going to <clears throat> put a colour background here. I'm not going to go for red. I think I'm going to probably go like a green or um, I've got this sort of drab colour here, which I might I might use um, or perhaps go for a moss and then a highlight. And then I'm going to come back and put the hair on and uh, just basically try and make this feel like it's a little bit more professionally done. There's supposed to be a big tongue here. So I have a feeling once I do the eyes, the hair, Maybe that will come together a bit more, but I'm going to put this background on first. Um, I thought it might also be interesting to say I went back to base principles and had a little look at, um, well, basically I went to the British Museum and uh, I started to have a little look at uh, some of the exhibits. So there's our sort of bird um, and it's got this sort of two-tone effect. So where's my equivalent? Our equivalent at the moment is over here. So stylistically, you know, I'm not that unhappy with what I've achieved there. What else have we got? Um, we've got a snake. This is from the Etruscan section, by the way. Um, just some miscellaneous ones there. And then a really odd, odd one there that I really don't know what that one is. Um, but then the last one is this boar's shield. Now, the interesting bit here is that you can see the red is all around the shield. So we haven't got this idea of a little disc in the middle. We've got it all around the shield. So what I thought I might do is take this alpha over here um, and actually <clears throat> make the entire shield quite red. Um, I didn't find too much in the way of cups when I was looking at the um, exhibits, um, but I think I'm going to make this cup slightly different. The black and white is okay, but I think I'm going to start to introduce a bit more color into the shields. So I'm going to start with this one. Well, actually, do you know what? I'm going to start by pulling this off in its entirety because I don't know why but it's beginning to really annoy me um, so what we'll do is just repeat take that off and then I'm going to overpaint it with black and just basically start this one again um, I haven't decided quite what color I'm going to do just yet but um, as I say it won't be blue I just don't think it's very historically minded and I don't think it suits the other unit that I'm trying to to match up against but as I say you can take these off fairly easily so um, there's no sort of lasting damage there I'm just using a fingernail just to make sure I get the last of edge off so um i think I, what i was going to show you actually if i can find the right picture um <clears throat> um well, well actually there's the there's the other one there's the winged the winged horse um <clears throat> again you know maybe ours is not the world's best rendering but at least we're getting a little bit there and i've got to sort this the head out so that it becomes a little bit more reasonable there's the famous uh greek playing dice but i did have one um that i was trying to find where <clears throat> it looks a little bit like um 
a leaping sort of um, sort of animal, and I decided that um, th that would make a good representation on some of these shields. I've done <clears throat> I've done too many red shields as well. I've decided this all this all full red I don't like, so <clears throat> I'm going to try and deal some with some of these. Sort that one out, and generally bring up the level of these flatter shields so that we've got a decent amount of um well so that they look you know on cut on par with the other sort of standard that we'll hopefully we'll be achieving um so i'll get a bit of planning going and then i'll speak to you shortly right so i've had another little look i've got uh, a moss shade here i've already painted this one black so i'm going to pick probably this one actually just because it's a slightly different shape um just go over this one with this moss color um and obviously you you'll see that you you have to get in a little bit here otherwise we're going to end up with a a red strip just turn that around i will put this one on a uh a holding stick shortly but um just for now i want to just make up my own mind about what i'm doing so as you can see, I've painted that one black, this one black, just for the start of 10. got two that are similar in red. I've also had another little look at the, <coughs> the motifs that I've got. And these, these guys are going to work, right? I, I need to, still need to do some improving to them. But these ones here, this core set, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with the way that they're going to look. Um, again, with these, I think they'll be fine with a little bit of coloration on. I think... Um, this moss color i'm now going to use as the background for this guy so we'll paint that one shortly but this one here uh, is one that i think i'm not pleased with the design so i'm going to change this so that the whole of this is red and then i'll put a proper little um sort of star motif on um but i'm going to probably start by painting all of that red to begin with so i'm just going to get myself prepped with a smaller brush this was a and um go around this gorgon's head and uh, get ourselves a little bit more of a, of a clearer picture as to what this is going to look like i mean it looks a little bit childish and naive at the moment and i i don't like that so we're going to try and sort that out i'll be back shortly well here we go so i'm using my trusty broken toad uh size zero and um i'm just going to take ooh, a little bit of surplus off there i'm just going to take this and run around here and I'm, I'm looking for something which is a dark enough contrast to the flesh tone that we're going to create without um without i don't know being too overpowering if that's the right phrase um and something that if i need to go black uh sorry background with a black lining it will cope with it and it won't uh really create too much of a problem Just make sure that we got some enough light here. There we go. Hopefully, uh, that might make life a little bit easier for you. What's actually annoying me at the moment is the the intersection where I've got the teeth, and it's not very clear um, at the moment. But when I put the the red tongue in, I think it will start to improve. And this uh, this should help getting the background in as well. And I'm trying to follow the curve of the shield around the outside. Keep that nice and neat. And if this particular video has shown you anything, um, it's probably shown you that it's okay to have, you know, a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C when it comes to doing these shields. And it's, I just said, I don't know if this is a similar thing to the way that artists paint a picture, but I tend to play around with certain things, and if I like it, it stays. If I don't like it, it goes. And, um, it feels 
a sort of development progress, sorry, a sort of evolutionary process in that you make some changes, you keep some of them, you get rid of some of them, and uh, hopefully eventually you get some somewhere that you'd like to be in terms of the overall end result. If you do go over the, what is the black portion here at the moment, don't worry about it, we're going to go around that later. I'm just trying to get round into the edges enough. Okay, so obviously you can still see that I've got white in there, that's fine. The actual hair on there is is quite sort of curly, as it were. Um, we'll get the um, <clears throat> the proper picture out again later and I'll show you what we're trying to uh, emulate. Um, in fact, we reach across here. As you can see, if I get this one back again, you know, it's, uh, uh, apologies, this is obviously the black and white version that I photocopied, but this section here is the obviously the, 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 the tongue, and it's very sort of garish and almost cartoonish. Uh, so as long as we get somewhere like that, with the hair curly like this, um, I won't be too unhappy. So we'll let that dry. I'll put the the red uh, surround on these guys, on this one anyway, and then uh, come back and we'll have a look at another go at progress. Okay, so while that's drying, um, or while these guys are drying up here, that I've overpainted, I'm gonna go back and try and do this uh, wreath effect here. So uh, just pop this extra light on. So if you remember, I put this very rough, sort of um, circular sort of shape. And um, what I'm gonna try and do is use a, a base green just to create a sort of leaf uh, type impression. And uh, historically I've been fairly uh, loose with this sort of approach in terms of creating a general impression. In fact, let me just start that again. Um, you need to sort of, I, I need to sort of do a, a kind of V shape. And I've got um, a foundry sort of green here, which is a forest green. And it may not look too much at the moment, but when I go back round and sort of edge it with the white, this should start to look a little bit nicer. And, uh, it doesn't honestly it doesn't take it sort of has a little sort of curled tail effect which will will do like that um, and then as I say keep keep the sort of open V sort of shape in mind as we go round and it starts to create a sort of um, floral style. Now honestly when I go around that with a bit of white um, and then start to accentuate the leaves that won't look too bad at all. So we'll um, we'll just put that one to one side for a moment. Now I notice that this one here um, is looking a bit dog-like rather than boar like so I'm going to try and do something with the, the snout. <laughs> You'll also notice that even though I tried to position this in the center, um, what I don't like is the fact that it's not balanced. So what I might do is just leave that there, but but take this end piece off here. So I'm just going to grab some white and see if I can uh, redo that one and sort that one out back shortly. Right, so I'm going to use a slightly darker white here. This is the 33 B middle sort of section of the triad and what I'm going to try and do is concentrate on getting a little bit closer to this shape here um, albeit obviously um, trying to center it um, where it needs to be so I think part of the problem is that I, I don't like the fact that I'm too far over 
on this right hand side. So I might actually keep that leg there. Um, and then go for a slightly smaller sort of rendering. Um, with um, just reduce these a little bit as well. Um, and it's obviously part of the issue is that I haven't really got the curvature. In that sort of rear section um, and I've got a, a head that's too upright you know this this is looking dog like rather than um, anything else so we're gonna create some radical surgery here so obviously we'll need to be back with the, uh, the black on this shortly but again this is just part of my process in terms of trying to get an end result that suits my suits my needs and, and actually i know that, that may not look a great deal but just from visualizing it here uh, i'm actually quite pleased with the positioning in terms of the overall size i'd much rather have a smaller animal centered than uh, the original that i had to begin with and I'm just gonna for consistency run around the rest of the shield like that and I'll let that dry uh, and come back to that with uh, some more treatment so now I'm going to find uh, a suitable animalistic shape for some of these um, and I'll give you a look at the pictures and we'll see what we can do Okay, so it may seem a little bit odd, but I've um, found this representation here, which is actually on a Celtic shield. Uh, but this sort of animalistic design was actually reasonably common um, in a lot of cultures, uh, and certainly I don't think will be out of place in an army that's uh, based in early Italy, subject to quite a lot of uh, different influences. So I'm going to try and keep that sort of general style. Uh, in mind when we come to do some of the uh, patterns here and I'm going to pick these two shields um, I'm going to do something a little bit different with these guys um, which we'll come to in a moment but all I'm going to do here so say is keep in mind that we're, we're we're creating something which sort of does that in terms of body shape um, and again I'm going to try and mimic that the other side like that Um, it's also got uh, a, the sort of shape that I'm after it's got a couple of legs here and again I'm just literally doing some stick uh, impressions at the moment to give us a, a general sort of sizing your front legs there like that oops um, and I tend to I suppose that the, the closest analogy I can give you is that when you look at those cave paintings and you see the stick animals, uh, that's really what I'm working from here. Um, I don't know if my light's particularly great there, but you can see the sort of general shaping that we're creating. Um, I need to get a little bit more water into the into the black that I'm using because it's a little bit a little bit dry making this a little bit more awkward than it should be really um, in fact let's get a little mix with that little stir Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, <clears throat> and obviously, as you can see, it's looking a little bit lizard-like at the moment. Uh, and that's because I've got this area up here not done as well as I'd like. So we'll be doing that again shortly. And really, we need to think carefully about what that's going to look like. It's on the original, it's quite full in body. And then sort of slopes away like that. That makes sense. So if I could get this looking a little bit better over here. I think we'll end up with something not too terrible. Uh, the paint, it's quite, a, it's quite a warm day today actually, unusually. And the paint is uh, giving me a bit of grief. But actually, just as a base, basic shape, I'm going to leave that alone because I think that one, with a little bit of treatment around the edges, won't look too bad. Um, then, <clears throat> just in terms of revisiting my Etruscan shields and some of the Greek shields, we've obviously got this section up here that I photocopied, which is this one here that you can see. Um, but obviously this, this star motif is quite common um, and that sort of goes for a lot of Greeks and Italiate sort of um, <clears throat> cultures and we haven't got any of that on this pattern at the moment. Now I've got this original shield that I've, I painted over. This was the one with it on originally. So I might just use this opportunity to just put um, quite a black line in here, and the reason I'm the reason I'm going black on this one is that I want to create quite a good stark contrast between the colour that I'm going to use and the uh, underlying. background but I'm also going to do this a little bit differently and have a smaller section in each one of those and what I'm going to try and do is create a bit of a sort of pointed affair here so from the center into point at the uh, end of the uh, star's point if you like that's like that well, this black is really so it becomes almost floral in its nature rather than a star if that makes sense Oops. hopefully oops hopefully you can see some of that let me just make sure i've got some light on it maybe that helps a little bit to show you what I've Doing. but this is as I say just a basic shape again we're going to do a little bit of an overrun on that quite happily um oops obviously get the right way up well, on some of these other ones uh, I'm going to do much lighter colors so we'll be back with those shortly okay so I'm back on this one again um just because I saw it in front of me and decided that I needed to do something about the, uh, the end result. And I'm not going to go too mad. 
in terms of what I'm trying to achieve here. Um, so that really doesn't look that great on the camera, but to be quite honest, um, I think it's picking up a hell of a lot more detail than the naked eye does. Um, and actually, that's not too bad uh, from my perspective. Now, there's a faint feathering on the back of the original picture, but I'm going to ignore that on the grounds that it's going to be pretty hard for that to to come over in the, the picture. But we do need to put a little white line across the top here to make sure we've got the right representation of the leg. Um, but I'm going to leave that one like that and um, move on to doing some lighter shapes on one of these other ones.